so this, this is the way I see it. When I look at the, the way in which the physical world works, the physical world works in a way that is just beautifully consistent. That is, there are a few uh, laws of nature that we can use to describe many, many different phenomena, at least simple ones. Uh, it's really hard for us to understand anything that's complex. But a wide variety of very simple phenomena can be understood on the basis of very, very simple laws. Uh, and the more accurately we look at these things, the more impressed I am about how well the laws of physics describe so many relatively simple things. Of course, I'm always looking for something that will fail, because that means we'll learn something new. But that will just reinforce the, the general idea that I'm, I'm going to say. The whole thing looks like a put-up job. <laughs> so let, let, me, let me say something about the historical uh, context of that phrase. In the 20th century, there was a very famous astronomer named Fred Hoyle. And Hoyle uh, was an advocate of what's called the steady state theory of the universe. He thought the universe always existed, and it'll always be the same. And as people started making more and more observations of the way things were, were, uh, were happening in the outer reaches of space, people started to realize that the universe was expanding and came up with uh, this idea of what's called the Big Bang, that, that the universe started at some specific time. Hoyle was horrified by this idea. In fact, he ridiculed the idea by calling it the Big Bang. He was the one who came up with the, with the name as a way of ridiculing the idea. And the reason was that he thought it sounded too much like the biblical idea of creation, which he considered to be just, you know, superstitious nonsense. But in the end, he had to accept that this is the way things were. And when he looked at physics in general, I mean, he was an atheist, but he was an honest atheist. And he looked at the laws of physics and the way everything was hanging together, and the way in which the, the astrophysical observations were, were all consistent with this idea of, of a creation, but, but also the way the, all the laws of physics were, were uh, uh, working together to produce a kind of world in which we could live. So because why is the world so well adapted for us? Um, well, you might say, well, gee, there's a lot of other uh, places in the universe that aren't so well adapted for us to exist. But the fact of the matter is, if the laws of physics had been a little bit different from what they are, we couldn't exist. And Hoyle understood this, and a lot of scientists have understood this. And what Hoyle said was, it looks like a put-up job. It looks like somebody fixed things to make them so that we would be able to exist. And so a world that's interesting and complex enough that it could have, have living thinking, interacting creatures could exist, it just seems unreasonable that such a universe occurs by chance. And Hoyle uh, admitted that, even though he was an atheist. He said it was a put-up job. And the more I look at the laws of physics, the more I've got to agree that it looks like a put-up job. It doesn't look like something that could just have happened at random. Now, is that a proof of the existence of God? No, I don't think so. But I think it's a strong suggestion.